Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. And yes, we got another video on Flux and some updates regarding models and Loras and a whole slew of uh, things that are coming down the pipeline as people really start digging their fingers into this. And um, uh, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It really just comes down to all we had to do was give people access. Yeah, I know this isn't probably the best picture in the world, but I kind of liked it. I figured I'd put it as my background for right now for this video. So, uh, to get started, the last video that went up today at 1 o'clock um, gave you the introduction to using the new uh, updated Forge Web UI that allows you to access the Flux models. And as of the time I was doing the video yesterday, um, I hadn't really taken a look around to see if there were other models, but there are. So the models that they recommend you use are based off the dev model. And so there's one in particular that has a, uh, the NF4, um, uh, God, I can't think right now. There was two different models. Uh, one was the uh, NF4 and the other one was the uh, FP8 version of the model, but they were both dev models. Now, <clears throat> I decided to take a look around, and yeah, sure enough, if you go to Web, or excuse me, Civit AI, uh, log in, go to your filters, make sure you have it set on checkpoints and LORAs, and then down here, just select they've already got it updated for Flux 1S, which stands for Schnell, and then the Flux 1D for Developer. Um, for those of you who are interested in using the uh, Chanel because it is a little faster, uh, definitely make sure you have that. And it's kind of crazy because when I checked this morning, there was only like maybe six of these up. So three or four of these are brand new even as of that time this morning. And I've downloaded a couple of them so that we can go through and test this out. Now, you'll look at these. When you look at these, most of these people are saying that it's for comfy UI and whatever else. But when you get into them, like, let's go into Demon Flux here. It says, uh, first is my first Flux. If I use the FP8 version. Uh, but they baked in the... Um, so it's based on the Flux 1 Schnell model and the Flux 1 dev model. So it's got both stuff baked in. Uh, it is a 15 gigabyte, almost 16 gigabyte model. And it doesn't require uh, the VAE, the clip or the, uh, the UNET clips or VAE, which is all baked into it. So it's one model. Mm -hmm. Now, most of these people putting these out, again, are saying that they're for Comfy UI, but I decided I wanted to give it a try. So I went ahead and downloaded a few of them, including Demon Flux. Uh, but we've got, so here's the two Flux ones I showed off yesterday. Then we got Flux 1 Compact Clip and Flux 1 Chanel FPA all, all together in one, and then the Marduk 191S Flux 1. So these are all based off of Chanel, which does give you faster renders and, and great quality. And it allow, And here's the other thing. So those two models I did yesterday require 20 steps. These new ones, like the Demon Flux, can work off of four, um, which means you can get your renders faster. Uh, I wouldn't change any other settings. We'll just go in here and put, uh, um, I don't know, uh, let's do a uh, painting of a epic uh, alchemist floating through a forest with orange and black color theme with the words I don't know um, be free <laughs> in so, I don't know if this will work um, in smoke letter. Let's see if that works. We're going to change the aspect ratio. No, I think that's right. Uh, that's what I want. It's more of a portrait. So we're just going to go ahead and render that. Uh, so I did just barely load it up. Let's see how long it takes to kind of bring this up. It does an initial load of the model and then we'll should dive right into rendering. Now I do have my other forge package running, but I don't think it's loaded any models yet. So I think this should go through fine. So let's see what it does. Give it a second. Yeah, no, I think it's going to get hung up. It does not like it when I have my other package running. So let me let me cancel that and close that out. We'll get this going here. Oh, 
Hold on. No, I forgot. This model does take about 20 seconds to load into, into memory. So just so you can kind of see what's going on here. You can see current free 10 gigabytes of VRAM required model, 11 gigabytes required inference, 1024, but I'm at a deficit of 1.3, but because this is utilizing RAM, it offloads some of that model to RAM so that it is able to run this model. And since it's not a whole lot that it has to offload, then it's able to move it pretty quick. Yeah, the other, the other package is definitely holding it up. Give me just a second. Okay, now we got that taken care of. I've got the uh, prompt back in there. I've reloaded both, inter er, well, the, the one interface and shut the other one down. So again, we're gonna get an idea of what this looks like. We're gonna hit generate on this and then bring that back up so you can kind of watch this. So you can see it does the initial load. Those one model, same thing we saw before. It should be much quicker getting that in there. Yep, 4.6 seconds and there you go. Now, oh, you know what? I left it on 20 steps. Let's, uh, I mean, it's still gonna move pretty quick. It's gonna be about 30 seconds to do that. So let's just let that run. I'm noticing it did not do the, the words. I was kind of worried about how I was formatting that, but that's okay. Let's just let that finish. Yeah, screw it, let's just interrupt it. Let's change this back down to four. And hit generate on that again. It is kind of what I was thinking there. He's floating through the forest. Let's just see if it gets the words this time. So we got four steps this time. I do like that style though. That's pretty cool. I'm floating through the force like that. And it's not getting the, the words. It's just, I, I honestly think this because I've got this really weird. Um, let's put this over here. Typically works better there. But we're going to get faster renders of. So that render took nine seconds. And so. Uh, and we are talking about a 16 gigabyte model. This one, eight seconds. Not oh, nine seconds, okay. That's kind of cool. Uh, B free, so it's missing something. Yeah. At, at the top. Be a little more specific with the lettering. The more detail you get to like the kind of letters, words, or whatever it's going to be, it actually helps the model uh, to determine like where that's going to be and where, where it's going to go. There we go. That's what I thought. So there you go. There's a Chanel model that works called Demon Flux. I'll leave a link, but it's going to be on Civet AI. Uh, let's switch over to one of the other ones here. Let's go to the uh, Flux One Compact. Should render similar results. Obviously, each one's going to be built just a little bit different the way they, how they, however they bake it in. So if we hit generate on that, it does a slight model move. Just want you to be able to see what's going on here. It's going to be about the same. This is a pretty big model. And uh, um, it seems they're all about the same size. I and mean, it depends on like what they're baking into it, that kind of thing. But um, seems to and i love i love that forge is all set up to utilize both vram and your regular memory and or a swap file to be able to allow you to use these larger models even if it slows it down a little bit it's nice that it actually allows you to do it switching out a big model takes a second there it goes <laughs> So there you go. Uh, I didn't get the free in there, but pretty close. We could adjust some of that. So again, four steps on that one. Uh, that one was, again, nine seconds, a nine second render. So not bad. Let's go to, what else we got? We got the Marduk model. Let's render that one out. Loading the model. Again, switching model, switching this particular model can be longer than using uh, SDXL. It's not bad, it depends on the system you have, obviously, but it's not bad. Oh, that one's pretty cool. 
it's a little weird, a little wonky. I think this one's not a four-step model. Let's bring this one up to 20 and see what it looks like. I like that image though. Let's grab the seed for that. See if it renders the same one. Because I'm changing the steps, it may be, it's gonna be a little different. We're at 22 steps, which is fine. Just gives it a little bit extra time to render. Maybe add a few more details, but whatever. And what I've noticed, I, again, I have not tested all the samplers, but see, it seems that staying on Euler is about the, what you're going to want to do and simple. Uh, they'll, you know, more information will come out about how to, um, you know, where they'll start integrating some of this, the image to image, even in painting and things like that. I believe they will eventually have an in painting model. I would really encourage whoever's doing these, uh, baking these models to work on what an in-painting model for this looks like. Uh, I think it would be a great thing to have. I love my SDXL in-painting model. I still use it. Yeah, that one's insanely better. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I love that one. That was a really cool picture. The letters are all written in almost like blood. Okay, so the other thing that they're coming out with, let's go back here, are Loras. And I have not tested any of these. Uh, I figured I'd take some time here in this video to test them. Let's just see if we can't uh, get something to work. Um, so they have <laughs> Babe's Kissable Lips. Uh, they had a realism one here at some point. Let's see. Uh, Laura, Laura, Laura. Wow, so that one and that one. Flux Loras. I don't know if that's an actual... This one's interesting. So this PS1, PS2, old 3D game style. Let's take a look at that one real quick. Flux 1S. Okay. I Not necessarily one I would do, but let's grab that. Let's put it in and see if it works. Okay, so I've downloaded that file and put it under the Models LoRa folder. Let's come back over here. Let's go to LoRa. Let's refresh this and just see if it comes up. Animate diff. Oh, I did download some other one, Flux Realism Laura. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh, there's the. Uh, PS Flux one. Let's try the realism one. I'm, you know, I'm not sure if that. I want something that's going to really show a difference. So let's try this one. Uh, put that one in there. Is there any keywords? Trigger words. PS One game style. Sure. Let's just grab that one. Force a black color theme. Just paste that right there with a comma space, and let's just see what it does. So I'm gonna say I don't think that it's really applying it there. Um, and I am running a seed. Let's shut that off. That could be part of the problem. Let's. It could also be the model. Let's switch back over to Demon Flux for a bit here. We're gonna put this on auto. Leave everything else the same. Let's give that a try. But we're gonna do it down at. Let's do it at eight steps instead. Again, this is just trying to figure out if some of this stuff works. It's all brand new for the Flux model. I mean, it loads it. I can see that it's grabbing the um, Laura. It's not giving any errors on it. A lot of times with Laura's, it's about the keyword. Make sure that's in there right. Even you know, changing the emphasis on it. Um, and making sure you're using the keyword right. But honestly, I mean, they got a, a lot of keywords in there. With these Laura's, they really need to simplify it. Honestly, but uh maybe it's a little different 
It's hard to tell. PS2 game style? Interesting. Again, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not familiar enough with video game styles to really see the difference. But, you know, we could try one of the other ones. We got uh, Paradox Diff Flux. I don't know what that is. And then we got Realism. Let's come up here. Let's get rid of this. Let's do the Realism. Throw that out there. Let's see what that does. Interesting. That one does look different. I mean, there's still, like with him, there's a little bit of that with a little more realism. Smoke looks a little more real. Uh, so I believe that one is actually doing something. So we got some working Lauras here. And, you know, I really believe this is going to go really fast. When I, when I say fast, we're going to see a lot of this just start flying out. And I wouldn't doubt if by tomorrow we got six more different mo baked models, Lauras and whatnot. And uh, hopefully what we start seeing are the really integral parts like the end painters and what and, and things like that. I don't know how important that is going to be to people. Now that we got the SDXL end painter, uh, like the one I use, uh, for those who are curious, I use the Dream Shaper XL Lightning end paint. It allows you to do the end painting really fast. You, know, you can do it down, you know, four to eight steps or more. But... Uh, um, and that I do have integrated on my, uh, my site. So anyway, that's it. So just be aware there are updates coming there. Uh, I've even updated the Forge web UI. They've, they've added some updates. I don't know exactly what they did. Probably just some behind the scenes fixes. Uh, but things are moving fast and it's exciting times. So, uh, glad you could join me for this like, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video. Uh, if you want to join our Discord, go ahead and put a request in the comments. Uh, we'll send, give you an invite link. we got a large community that uh, loves talking about this. We're showing off all sorts of images and uh, helping and uh, providing a lot of free resources. Okay, talk to you later.